<laughs> and then another one is called Maddie's, which is little... Please join me in a salute to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome to the Board of Selectmen's meeting, April 24th, 2017. First on the agenda is public hearing RSA 41 14-A proceedings amend and release of date town owned deed restrictions on formerly leased land second hearing one Charles and Martha Foley 7 9th Street request to amend deed restriction number three fence height of no more than three feet to four feet uh, is there anybody from the public that wishes to be, be heard would that be us? Yeah, that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I just want to give a couple pictures. Okay. Because I have eight garbage cans. These are two with a three foot fence. These are six that I'm asking for a four foot fence. And the reason. Okay, if you would. Uh, at the podium. Oh, gosh, I was never good at book reports. Oh, All right. <laughs> <laughs> State your name and your address, please. Okay, I'm Martha Foley, 7 9th Street. And this is my husband, Chaz, and he's the quiet one. <laughs> but um, we are asking for your permission to allow us to raise the fence limit from three feet to four feet because I have six of the huge garbage cans that are approximately two feet wide by 44 inches high. And you can see in the picture with a three-foot fence, because um, my garbage cans face... Ocean Boulevard and so when the wind comes down the tops whip open and when the tops whip open I get all kinds of garbage I get all kinds of smells I've had two skunks removed from my property and I find them very problematic so I was hoping by having the four-foot fence it would be four inches taller than the handle that would cut down on the wind that way the lids wouldn't come over and we wouldn't get the smell because they are basically right outside our living room windows. And, uh, you know, on a Friday night, it can be kind of... Uh, Problematic? To say the least. I wanted to say specifically, they're the neighbor's garbage cans. Oh, yeah. What the hell? They wouldn't be out. Well, you said, <laughs> you said we in the presentation, oh. so I just wanted to you know if we're being uh, Remember, we're on TV. Oh, oh yes. Yes. <laughs> I will remember. Did I clarify that well? Yes. That was what the heck, right? Sorry, yeah. we're farmers. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I'm sorry. You're absolutely right, dear. So these are, right. so these are your neighbor's cans, They're not neighbor's. yours. Yeah, we have a little single family cottage that we take great pride in. We are next door to two apartment houses that piggyback to each other. So all the garbage cans from the apartment building behind come forward to the apartment house in the front. And they start at the road... And they go up our driveway about 18 feet, so it's more than half the length of my driveway. So they're an eyesore, they cause litter, I have skunks, and they stink. Are they still leaving them next to the road? 24-7. Yeah, see, that's what's not supposed to happen. 24-7. Let's go, let's go to the board around. Regina, do you have anything? Um, no, I mean, I don't, we are allowed to go up to four feet, correct? Five. Five? Five? Can I get five? You've asked for four, so. Ugh. Rusty? No, I think uh, they, they've got a right to to do that. I think it's, I don't have a problem with this. Hey, Rick? The problem is I, it's against the town rules and regulations to put those trash cans in the public right-of-way, and I think you should, that I, should be dealt with, and you should complain about it. I went over it to DPW, stops. and he said, oh, that's nothing. You don't have to see down by the casino. <laughs> it doesn't matter. That's, That's the town right of way. It shouldn't be there. Right. We're not allowed to bring our trash out and leave it there for a couple yeah. of days, never mind 24 hours 24 a day. 24 7. It's supposed to be removed following the removal of the trash yeah. that I've same day. Down there and I see it. I know you there. have. And 24 7. And we've all taken turns pulling them out of the street because, because the tenants are there. They put them out, I think, before they go to work. Well, if they don't want they to can do, do it that, right, they should just... They can, they can put them out the yeah, night before. but the wind comes down, you know what oh, I'm saying? Oh, we have so a solution. It right. just, it's not nice. Bill, do you have any I have no comments, thank you. Uh, yeah, I agree with, with Rick, I think, it, that 
Number one, they shouldn't be there. That's what and, I thought. And, and somebody should take action to make sure that they're they're removed. If well, I, the public right I believe, away. Mr. Chairman, that there's somebody here this evening from the Public Works Department who was listening diligently to this conversation, <laughs> and and pa past instances where we have had someone who has refused to remove them after being asked to do that. We've emptied the trash in the morning and then picked the cans up and taken them away. Mm -hmm. That's no, twenty four seven. They've hit me in the face every day, and I have litter. And it's not the nice. Well, to be fair, if you look at the pictures, I think maybe two or three of the six are on their property. But the other three are in the town, what but, do you call it, right away? Yeah. Yes. But they start right on our driveway, so yeah. they wave to us every time we pull in. And there are other neighbors complaining about that, too. Oh, yeah. All right. So this, this is the first public hearing or the second? second. This is the second. So we're going to vote on it? No. So you, no, no, one more. Wait. Seven to fourteen. Seven to fourteen days. Seven to fourteen. Days. Gotta wait. We have to. You have to have three hearings. Oh so, my lord! Actually, oh, so maybe I could ask two five hearings feet. and a vote. Two hearings and a vote, but it has to be separated by. Oh. You, you already have one hearing on the four feet, so. Oh jeez. And we we don't want that language anymore. No. Jeez is okay. Jeez <laughs> is okay. Well, I'm, I'm thinking That's we can always fine. go back next year. And no. I, listen, I'm, I'm happy with four yeah. because four really helps on both sides. It helps her because they don't blow open and the garbage and so forth and the wind. It breaks the wind because one of the tenants thanked me and said, oh, my gosh, this is great. You know, so. And you're liable to ask for five and said, we'll say no. That's quite oh, possible. Oh, Rick, really? Right. Yeah, because so. we have other people that are here I that know. are asking for I'm happy with four. Yeah. Right. Do we have any, uh, do you have anything else on that? <clears throat> No, I don't want to swear. I'll be. Okay. <laughs> Do we have anybody anybody else in the public that would like to speak to this? Okay. If not, close the, close the hearing close on this the one. hearing on this one, and we'll move on to the next. So All then right. I wait to hear from you to come back for the third. Oh, well, we are only have a vote the third, so right. it'll be our so vote. I don't, so we I don't, don't, we have, don't have to come back. No. Wonderful. Thank, Thank you, you for all your help. But if you'd like to, we'd love to have you. <laughs> Will there be cookies? We, uh, we love colorful no, commentary. If you bring them. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, number two, Daniel Considine, 30 Dover Ave, request to amend deed restriction number three. No fences may be created upon said premises other than the ornamental fences of not more than three feet high to six feet. Anybody from the public wishing to speak on this? Well, I have Good. a couple things for you as well. So this is actually the plot plan of where the fence is going to go. Mm -hmm. where okay. if you, you know, yeah. It's so that this area okay. won't be, be behind. Yeah, why don't you just pass that around and... If you want to state your name and your address, please. Dan Considine, 30 Dover F. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm Cole, and I drove the property to him as dad, Dan Considine Sr. Okay. So I was looking to raise the fence. The biggest issue we've had is uh, people coming from the state parking lot, coming down behind our house and walking through, cutting through our yard and heading out towards Dover Ave. In a few occasions, too, people have been urinating in those bushes that you see behind our yard. And I got two young kids, and I've gotten into a few, you know, verbal altercations with people back there. And uh, so I was looking to get be able to put a fence up there, the three foot high one. I mean, anyone. There's already a three foot right. state fence there. And it doesn't stop anyone now. So I was looking to increase it for privacy and really safety to keep my kids safe from, I mean, you don't know who's coming from the parking lot right there. Okay. Do you have anything else? Is there anybody else in the public that wishes to speak on this? All right, seeing no one, we'll go to the board. Regina? Mm -hmm. but it's still well, blocks. as far as the height of the fence, I know that there was one concern to butter that wasn't able to make it tonight but isn't there something in the ordinance i'm reading this <coughs> ordinance here any fence or other structure in the nature of a fence unnecessarily exceeding five feet in height erected or maintained for the purpose of annoying now i know this isn't the reason why you're doing this but is there something that it's if it's too high that it may 
this ordinance, if it could be explained to me? Why was this ordinance? Actually, this is not an ordinance. This is a general law of the state. This is a law. This is a law. It's a state law. That, uh, fences cannot be more than five feet in height by statute. If someone complains about it, somebody builds one, they complain about it, then the, the fence has to be taken down to five feet. And we already have a complaint that they don't want a six-foot fence there. So legally, you can go as high as five. And then it's not complainable. Anything above five is considered to be a spite fence under statute. It's RSA 476. So could I'd, I'd be willing to do five. I mean, I just I didn't know. Okay. Anything else, Virginia? That's all I have. Well, I was down there and looked in, in, in the, I looked at that the other day. As a matter of fact, if I go on my phone, I can find some pictures of the property. <laughs> um, the area. Typically, the fences are three and four feet high, and I notice the guardrail type of thing you have up right. there is about two, two and a half well, feet. Well, that's the state. That's not right. Enough. That's right. That's like two and a half, yeah. two and a half feet. And I can yeah. see where you people, when, they, when they when they when they start talking about the plovers and the stuff like that, and they can't walk across the dunes, they're going to try to walk that's that right. way. And, and I I can I can I mean, see the that. Sit down there every night. They're drinking up on top of the dunes, and then they're coming down and they urinate and. As they're leaving, the right. 4th of July, they, they lit the door on fire or else they were the holes to okay. the fire up before the fire department got there. Yeah, no, I, I and I, I did notice an area where they had a campfire that's right outside you. Yeah, that was, that was someone lit fireworks off and lit the okay. door on fire. And we were there. I saw we that. And, uh, um, put it out. I, I think a four or even five foot is more conducive of the area. Going to six, we already have a state law that's. They yeah, call it a spite we, fence. Is what they, they. I just thought yeah. the fences were four and six. I didn't. You know, yeah. But yeah. We're just trying to get as much. But I, I, I think that's the view of the people using that big bush as a urinal. Right. Right. I got so, four grandkids. So I, I, I think I think six foot is too much. I think we ought to, we ought to think about either a four or a five. I'm in favor of four. I think it's uh, there is, you know, I know that you mentioned about the urinal, but that's. All of Hampton, and we have complaints constantly about that. And um, it, there is some. It's a beautiful area. That's the reason why they had the law at three because right. they probably have the uh, like. There's another one coming along tonight where there's not a higher wall is not going to change anything for anybody. But there's some people that would think they would have a limited exposure to the view there. By having four, six feet, well, I want and five feet. So I'm in favor of four feet. I just want to limit the know. view. Let's let's go through the board and then. I'll, Ms. Yeah, and are you talking a, a metal fence that you can see through? What are you talking? What kind of fence? Oh, that, I was just that would defeat the purpose of you. A metal fence, you're going to still see them urinating. We're trying to put a white plastic fence up so my grandkids, when they're sitting out there, don't see someone walking up and. Face and right towards my my house. People do and, that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. That I've, bush. Do it at my house. The bush. I've I mean, This is why we're here. I mean, if they if they weren't doing, if this wasn't a problem, I would we wouldn't be here. And then the same people are coming through the back. A no further questions. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I went down there too and looked. And I mean, you are in a beautiful spot. Oh, oh, I know. That's why we're only looking a block behind the house. We're not and, looking. Yeah, no. But block the whole thing. But, to me, a six-foot stockade fence really detracts from that area. I mean, you've got the, the dunes there and everything, and I, I think it's, I mean, there is, there, there is a view, a public view almost that, you know, I mean, like Rick said, there's a reason that, they, that those restrictions were in there. And I, and I could go with, with a, an ornamental four-foot. But, but I, I, stockade, I, I, I just don't, I just, I mean, I, I understand what you're saying, but I, but I think it just, Detract, distract, detracts totally from from what's down there. And there are bathrooms there too. Yeah, but, yeah, but that's they don't use them. use them. I mean, I'm trying to block the view of my kids yeah, seeing I, someone. I mean, if it was in your backyard and your grandkids were sitting trust out me, there, I have you know what I mean? Ladies that go to the bathroom. I know. Would yeah, you want it to straighten it out if you wait, could? Wait, we're not going to go back and forth. We're going to go. Order what about here. like a four foot picket fence, like wood, where you can't see through it? They, that, yeah, you can, that's a nice. Stuck in all the plastic. The they privacy. Have four foot privacy. Privacy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I just the the main thing is 
keeping the people out that are coming back through the backyard See thinking that. it's a cut through and people you know my kids sitting out back playing in the yard and someone decides that you know it's a good time to use the bathroom because they can't walk the extra hundred feet to use a toilet so this started because they extended the state park parking lot if you when you come over the parking lot they added up like 100 200 extra spots right. so the traffic has pulled up since right. the, the last thing, couple of years the only thing with that is that's that's a separate issue from what we're dealing right. with here i mean but it, it created it, our, it created I know it our created issue. Your issue but it's a separate issue so if we could just stick with the issue that we're talking about well that's why it's yeah. an issue anybody else got anything else anybody else in the public wishing to be heard on this um we had a letter. Yes. Does yeah. anybody want to read that letter? I couldn't. Oh, I got it. I have it right here. Yeah, you got it. Would you want to read this that? This is from 28 Dover Avenue. <coughs> uh, come to my attention that my abutter has requested permission to place a six foot fence around his property. I understand his concern for trespassers cutting through his property. Many decades ago, the state built a railing separating the state dunes from our private property. They did, however, place an opening on the railing on 30's property. For many years, people using the opening to get to Dover Ave. As a new owner, it is understandable that this concerns them. Last year, they closed off the opening in the railing and placed a three-foot fence on their property line. Not three feet from the line as the ordinance requires. And this prevented anyone from crossing over into 28's property. This looks very nice and solved the problem from that direction. If a three or even a four-foot fence went completely around 30's property, it would solve the trespassing issue and maintain the beauty and integrity of the property. The neighbor to my backyard has a four-foot fence, and then he's attached the picture, that is pleasing to the eye and aesthetically fits the dune area. Encircling 30's property with a six-foot enclosed fence creates a prison-like effect which takes away from the dune environment. I implore the board to rule in favor of the area aesthetics and allow the petitioner to place a fence around his house no more than four feet high. And the only reason that this resident was not able to attend tonight was because he already had a planned school vacation for his mm -hmm. children or grandchildren. I can't remember what. I'd like to also bring up the fact that <clears throat> they, on the other side, they already have a four-foot fence, and it's metal with slats that you can see through on the other side. Right. Which, which we're, not worried, yeah, we're not worried about We're worried about the doom side. Yeah, but, I mean, you do have a metal one that you can see through on the other side. Right, but that that's was, not... That's but not, that's, well, that, was to try to, that, on, that was to try to stem the tide last year. I just want to bring that forward to this meeting. Okay. Do have what happened only three. three. Yeah, three slots. And what happened... If I guess me, me, oh, Rusty? Oh. Well, I, I just think... Um, I also, like I say, I went down and looked at this piece of property. When we, we try to do stuff like that, when we do stuff like this, uh, the gentleman on the other side of 28 has a has a white picket fence type of the plastic, like you were just saying. Um, I, I I can understand your concern with the, with the looking through it and, uh, and the white, the four foot white. It's stockade, but it's plastic. It's, yeah. I understand the type you're talking about, and I, I think a four foot fence is fine there. It does, I think, what you're wanting it to do. Uh, I just think anything, you know, five or six feet is detracts from the neighborhood. And it doesn't do that. I think the four foot fence. I think the four foot plastic fence. That's what you put around a pool. That's what you put around anything else. I think uh, is is more than sufficient. I agree. Do you have anything new to add? I, I respond to the fence that he's talking about. We had to put that fence up last year. It's only a temporary fence because. 28 Dover Ave rents his property out to every different people every week and we were having a problem with them coming over while we're cooking into the property with little kids and we're going to get burnt. That's why that fence was put up because he didn't tell them that that was our property. They were telling us that, oh, this is his yacht and we're like, no, it's not. And that's why we had to put that fence up. I, mean, I, we don't, want, I don't want to block it but I don't want my grandkids yeah. sitting out there. I agree. Uh, yeah, that's the fence right there you talk about. The wrought iron? Yeah, the one you guys put up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's only, it's only yeah, it's stuck in, it's, right. we hit it with a little sledgehammer into the, into the sand. So I think. Because we're having problems with the rental. He, he rents it out weekly, so we get a different, we're living, we're using it as a summer home. We're here all summer long, and we get different people every week. And every week you're getting into arguments with them because this, I don't know if he's telling them it's his yard or what. And 
in that cut that he said he'd been in the fence. We didn't put the cut there. He said he had put the cut there on the fence for them to cut through. So. Right. Anybody, anything else from the board? No. Anything else from no. you guys? <laughs> Nobody else in the public wanting to speak? All right, so this one also. We'll be back in two weeks. Close the hearing and we'll be back in two weeks. Close the hearing. We'll be back in two weeks and make a decision on this. All right. Good. Thank nice. you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> public hearing number two on the agenda public hearing pursuant to RSA 31 colon 95. Dash B, Roman numeral three, open parentheses A, close parentheses, acceptance of Homeland Security grant for Skywatch unit for $139,814.10. And we have Chief Sawyer and Deputy Chief Hobbs. Welcome. Good evening. Uh, I believe I've uh, mentioned in the past about this grant that we were, this is a collaborative effort uh, between the University of New Hampshire Police Department, the Hampton Police Department, Laconia Police Department, and the Durham Police Department. This is a Homeland Security grant um, for the uh, FOR Skywatch Tower. What that is, is if you've ever traveled down to New York City, down to New Orleans for these major events with the crowds, it's a tower that lifts, is uh, pulled by a trailer and has a hydraulic lift goes up in the air, can be manned by an officer or not, um, and provides uh, security apparatus such as cameras and some other issues, radioed, uh, fully conditioned uh, for operations. The reason we sought this grant uh, cooperatively with these other agencies is we all run events uh, at different times of the year. So when we sat down together uh, to envision how we would use it, Hampton would be looking to use it on our fourth, busy Fourth of July holiday. Uh, our bigger private events like the Seafood Festival, UNH would be using it for their homecoming, their commencement, uh, and their bigger events up there, and Laconia would be using it for Motorcycle Week and the Pumpkin Fest. So all of those fall in different times. Uh, so today with Homeland Security, if you can do a grant that uses multiple jurisdictions, those are the grants that uh, generally get the most attention, and uh, that happened to work out very well for us on this. There is no matching funding. Uh, from the taxpayers of Hampton. This is just a grant from Homeland Security. If there is a any future upkeep or maintenance on that, we pro we'll have to contribute to that. But those are minimal. Thank you. Regina? Great job, Chief Deputy Chief. Uh, sounds like a great opportunity for the town. Thank you. Thank you. It's again, good job. I had somebody call me and ask me if you were getting a, a drone. And I said, no, it's not a drone. <laughs> That's not <laughs> 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 So, but, uh, you know, this is something that can be used. They use them in most of the uh, theme parks, have those. Correct. To the towers that are up there. I've seen them a number of places a number of times, and uh, it's a good deterrent. So I think it's excellent. Rick? No, thank you. Mr. Bean? No, thank you, gentlemen. Just playing the devil's advocate. <laughs> Privacy issues? No, the only places we would be using this is, is in issues... Uh, where people out in the out in the public domain, where there is no expectation of privacy. I know some people don't agree with that, but the the New Hampshire courts and the Supreme Court have ruled that you know if you're out on the beach, there is no expectation of privacy out there. So we wouldn't be using that to go up high and say look into hotel rooms or anything like that. That would not be permitted. It would be primarily out along Ocean Boulevard. Uh, I envision the Fourth of July somewhere, um, somewhere near the bandstand out in that area and for the Seafood Fest, probably up by the North Gate, just so we have better surveillance and an aerial view down into those event areas. But it would not be used for surveillance into buildings. Okay, very good. Did you have something, Russell? No, I'll stop. Uh, so what do, you, what do you need from us? You I need a vote of acceptance from the board. As, as under uh, New Hampshire law, we, every year we take a vote for unanticipated grants, but it takes two votes. It's one for us to go out and seek these grants, and then when we do get awarded one, a vote from the board to accept that grant. I'll make a motion that we accept the chief's motion recommendation by Rusty. on the grant. A second. Seconded by Regina. All in favor? Unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you. Gentlemen. Public hearings closed at 725. Public hearings closed at 725. And we now go to public comment period. Anybody here for public comment? Anybody wishing to speak? Seeing no one, we'll move on to the consent agenda. 
2017 veterans, veteran spouses, veterans total disability credit, and elderly, blind, and disabled exemptions. Uh, two, use of town property, Healy Wedding at Bicentennial Park, September 16th, 17th, the 2017. One day entertainment lice, license run for the ocean, 5K Blue Ocean Society, 060317. Four, parade and public gathering licenses run for the ocean, 5K Blue Ocean Society, uh, 0603 2017. Uh, and New Hampshire Towing Association Tow and Trade Show, May 5th, 20, May 21st, 2017. Entertainment license and posted permits, Ashworth by the Sea, 295 <coughs> Ocean Boulevard, Charlie's Tap House, 9A Ocean Boulevard, Cloud 9 Bar and Grill, 225 Ocean Boulevard, North Beach Bar and Grill, 931 Ocean Boulevard, Sea Catch Restaurant, 127 Ocean Boulevard, Recreation Advisory Council appointments, Tim Anderson, Sandy Mace, and Janine St. Germain. And number seven, Hampton Arts Network display of art at town offices. Motion to accept the consent agenda. Second. Motion by Rusty, seconded by Regina. All in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you very much. We now come to appointments. Christy Pulliam, Finance Director, Monthly Financials. Good evening. Good evening. It's hard to believe that the first quarter is already over. So, I'm here with the, the March financials. You should have all received them last week, and they are on the town website, and were also distributed to the budget committee. So, all the interested parties should have a copy. Um, attached to the financials this year, I have changed the format of my summary a little bit. The actual financial reports remain in the same format, though. I just uh, decided to change up what I report in my summary and include some other items that we might be dealing with in the finance department just to give the public a better understanding of everything that we do and not just the revenue and expenses. So. The target was 25% uh, for the end of the third quarter. If you can, and we'll do the revenue summary first. If you compare year-to-date income from March of 2017 to March of 2016, it is down by $123,622. When you review the attached revenue report, you can see the difference in revenue. The largest difference you will see is related to the High Street Lafayette Road project and the reimbursement from FEMA. So even though we're down $123,000, last year we had a revenue from um, offsetting revenue for the Lafayette Road project in the amount of $149,156. So we're right in line with where we were last year at this time. Another notable item is that since it is the end of the first quarter, I also made adjustments to the Revenue budget, as the auditors had suggested last year, I started to do that on a quarterly basis. So I have made any adjustments there where it looks like our revenue is either running a little bit higher or a little bit lower than what we had originally projected. The month's total income came in at $445,195. Of that total, motor vehicles came in at 277305 which is over the month's target by $4,480. The other major contributors to the month's total were interest on taxes at 20173 building permits at $14,935, highway subsidy at $61,571, departmental income at $21,919, and the real estate trust at $40,888. On the expense uh, side, of things you'll find that we are under the budget by four hundred ten thousand two hundred twenty five dollars or one point six six percent in march of 2016 the year-to-date expenses were two hundred nine thousand four hundred six or point eight seven under the month's target so we're running a little bit better so far this year um i'm just going to run through here real quick and point out any of the departments that were um any sections as a whole that were over the 25% target. Election administration is at 38.15. Um, we have the election behind us, so we should be good there. 
Legal expenses is at 27.58, but the legal department as a whole is under target at 24.26%. Personnel administration is at 25.68%, which is uh, largely related to the buyback program that we talked about when I was here in uh, with the February financials. Municipal insurance is at 25.75, which is driven up by the workers' comp and the membership dues, which are semi-annual and annual payments, so those have been made, so that's driving up the factor there. Emergency management is at 221. Uh, the police chief will be submitting for reimbursement for a portion of those expenses. That's a $1,000 line item, so it's easy to draw that percentage up quickly. Hydrants is at 49.06, and that's related to the fact that we do two semi or do a semi-annual semi payments for that. So we made one of our two payments for this year. Cleaning and maintenance and public works is at 49.64. Snow and ice removal is at 89.02 percent. Highways and streets as a whole is at 31.28 percent. In the wastewater treatment administration is at 30.87 when you include the open purchase orders. Some line items that are driving up this percentage are engineering, vehicle maintenance, and the um, open purchase order for chemicals, which they do one purchase order for the whole year. So that line is at 98%. Landfill operations post closure is at 26.51%. The Public Works Department as a whole is at 26.63%. On pages 16 and 17, you see that the Warren articles that were carried forward from the previous year have had some activity, and also you'll find that all the 2017 Warren articles are now included on there. When you look at other funds other than the general fund, Fund 24, the recreation, has a balance of 161534 which includes beach donation stickers for $3,020, which goes towards scholarships. The uh, Fund 25, the Cable Committee, has a balance of $238,024. Fund 26 for private detail has $118,980. Fund 27, the EMS Fund, has a balance of $318,615. And the Wastewater System Development Charge uh, fees collected in 2006 17 total of 10,674 with a balance in that account of $95,598. Um, some other things that last week when Fred uh, brought up to the board that we have filed our uh, bond application with the New Hampshire Municipal Bond Bank. Uh, we can pull that at any time, but we felt that in order to be included in the sale, we needed to get that application in last week. So that application is in and has been accepted. So. Um, with understanding that we can also pull it. We've been looking into the, right now the bond bank is expecting for a 10 year bond, they're expecting a rate of 2.5 and I think it's going up to about 3% for a 20 year bond. They're just their estimates of sale will take place in June. We've also been encouraged by our bond council, uh, Divine Millimit, to seek out some um, rates from local banks and other institutions to see what kind of rates we can get from there. The group that we worked with in 2014 when we refinanced was PFM Financial Advisors. They just did a bond for uh, a 10 year bond for Bedford for 1.97% and a 20 year bond for Rochester for 2.85. So those rates are fairly favorable. I looked up to see what our rate was when we uh, did the refinancing in 2014 and it was 2.15. So we're still right in that same ballpark, which I was kind of surprised to see, but I'm going to be reaching out to other banks. I got a whole list and I'll reach out to them and see what kind of rates we can get from them to get the best rate possible. And we'll come up with some charts for you guys in regards to what a 10, 15 and 20 year looks like, the interest that would be charged on those and for us to uh, look at together. Another item that w I've been working on is the Recreation Department has new software that they would like to implement. It's called Rec Desk. It was part of their warrant article that was passed at the election. And in regards to that, we have to partner with uh, an agency who will process the credit cards through the Rec Desk. We've uh, done some research on that and found that the majority of the communities in this area are paying 2.9% for credit card processing. I have 
found through one of the vendors that was suggested by Rectus. It's called Government Portal, and I have secured a rate of 2.75. Um, so if the board could grant us approval to join in with Government Portal, sign a contract. It's actually not a contract with them. We can get out at any time, but we're guaranteed 2.75 for a year, and uh, we need to have that in place so that the Recreation Department can process credit cards. Once we get the Recreation Department up, I'm going to look to them to see if we can secure that rate for our police department and our public works because it's much lower than what we're currently paying through uh, World Pay is who we use now. So if the board can give us approval for that tonight, we can get that in the works. The Recreation Department would like to go live with their um, new rec desk on May 1st. So. I make a motion that we go to, that we allow the rec department to go to the credit card thing as She's just explained. I will second that motion. Okay, motion by Rusty, seconded by Regina. Anybody have any discussion on this? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed? Unanimous. Okay. That was easy, huh? That was easy. Are you finished? I am finished. Finished. Regina. So, first quarter is done, and we are 1.6% underspent. Yes. Thank you very much. And. On the bond bank, so what did you say the rate was for that again? Uh, they're, what you've seen so far? Yeah, they're predicting about 2.5 for a 10 year and up to, I have all the rates here. It's about two, actually for a 10 year they're looking at 2.25. She had originally said 2.5, but after they got all the applications in, 2.5 for 10 year and it goes up to 3 for a 20 year and then it goes up from there. And then when we financed that other debt through them, it was like a 2.15 or something. Oh, this is through the bond bank, those rates. The rate that we had through PFM, um, we got 2.15 in 2014, but they just closed a uh, bond for Bedford for a 10-year bond for 1.97. So They go through banks, correct? Correct, yeah. So we might even be able to get a better rate. A better rate, yeah. I have a whole list, so I'm going to be reaching out to several different uh, banks in the area to get some rates and stuff. All right, let me know if you need any help with that because I saw some of those names in there familiar. Okay, great. Right, thanks. I always like help. Thank you, Rusty. Excellent report, thank you. Rick? Thank you for your report, very informative. Phil? No, thank you, Director. Thank you, it was very good. Thank you. A couple of things, just, I always like a little explanation. Okay. For the public, when you say you're down in revenue, 149 or 100. It was 123. Yep. Right, and then you say because of a grant last year, right? Yep. That was a one-time. Correct. That's why I was saying it's not as it's not very concerning to be down, even though we were down 123. Some people might be concerned with that. Right. But and last year we had received 149,000 prior to March closing that was related to a grant to offset a Warren article. At and that Herman. was a very specific. Correct. Right. So, so it's not. So I don't really think we're down. But yeah. if you look at the numbers on paper, we are down. So right. I was just right. pointing just that out. Just to make people aware of that. And I had something else in my old mind. I might have lost it. Oh, everything is online. Everything is online. It has been since Friday. Yes. So people can see it. Yes. All the prior months are online. Yes, they are. Under the um, documents and go to finance, they're all right there. And that's all the money we take in, all the money we spend. Yes. Yeah. Very good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate seeing you. Next. Where's my agenda? There it is. No, it's not. You got an agenda there? Oh, I got it. I found it. <laughs> Number two. See, they're up here already. <laughs> Chief Sawyer, Police Department. A, waiver of the 718-15 purchasing policy for the refurbishment of the HPD Fitness Center single source provider. Correct. That was a mouthful, so. Yeah. Um, I just have a memo that uh, is addressed to Fred, but I'd like to read that. Just kind of encompasses what we're trying to accomplish. In January of 2005, the Hampton Police Department moved into the new police facility located at 100 Brown Avenue. With the new facility, we gained a fully equipped fitness center. The fitness center has allowed our officers to maintain an appropriate level of fitness that is required of their positions. Over the last 12 years, much wear and tear has occurred, and some of the equipment is in need of maintenance or replacement. 
maintenance has become problematic on some of the equipment as the manufacturer of Body Masters is no longer in business. I'm requesting permission to purchase items from the, for the fitness center utilizing funds from the asset forfeiture account. The vendor we have chosen is Gronk Fitness Equipment of uh, Williamsville, New York. Gronk Fitness is the exclusive distributor for this region for Life, Fit, Life Fitness and Hampton Strength who are the manufacturers of the exercise and strength equipment we intend to purchase. The cost for the fitness equipment is $14,806.64. As part of this project, we would also replace the current flooring with a composite rubber, non-slip floor, which is specifically designed for fitness centers. This portion of the project would also be completed by Gronk Fitness as the sole source vendor in the region for a flooring product manufactured by Regapol America. The cost of, for flooring is $5,703.22. I am re also requesting the following items in our inventory be declared surplus property for disposal. These, have, these items have little to no trade value and will be removed by the vendor installing the new equipment. These items are a Body Master Universal Cable System, a Body Master's Leg Press Machine, and a Body Master's Seated Rower. The total cost of this project is uh, $20,509.86. And again, I'm requesting that uh, we use the department's asset forfeiture account, which are those funds that we receive from our uh, asset forfeitures, primarily through our drug investigations, but also we've done a couple with uh, gambling. And uh, we have uh, sufficient funding in those uh, accounts to fund this project. Questions? Virginia. Okay, so no tax. It's not going to come out of the budget. You have the no totally funded by asset forfeiture, which are funds that we've we've received through either the DEA for our drug asset asset forfeiture or through the st uh, through the state of New Hampshire for our gambling and some of the counterfeit merchandise investigations we've run over the years. Okay, and I just like from the town manager as far as the waiver from our purchasing policy. Do you have anything to? Uh no, you certainly have the right to approve that. The chief has requested it. It does. It is in conformance with the requirements as long as he requests it. Okay. Thank you. Rusty? I think you said the stuff's been there for 12 years. We've been using it for 12 years. I think obviously, it's time to get replaced. One part I didn't mention in the memo also is um, in New Hampshire, any officer that was hired after January 2001 is required to test every three years uh, as part of maintaining the certification. So we do want to provide them a professional Jim, Jim, to use that. No, no other questions. Rick? So is it Gronk as in Gronkowski? I think this was Gronk before he was Gronk, so. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a, he has his, uh, a company making fitness equipment. I've been reading about it. Yeah, they don't actually make the equipment. They're, they're a sales representative for the companies I listed, so I, I don't believe they're affiliated at all with uh, our tight end. <laughs> oh, okay, thank you. Bill? I move that uh, we approve the uh, asset purchase uh, is articulated by the chief. Second. Okay, and I just have a couple of things. Sure. Number one, fitness equipment wears out, right? Correct. So it becomes less efficient <coughs> if they're using it after 12 years. Correct. Correct. And if they are working out constantly, it saves the town in injuries most likely, right? Because Absolutely, and insurance costs, officers that work out, every study will show you that they have fewer injuries. And the floor you're putting in would be a safety issue also, right? The floor we currently have was not designed as a fitness floor. Back when we put it in, there weren't a lot of companies doing that. And if you saw the workout, so you see people doing that are more active. So we're trying to open up space with the, with the system we're going with. Um, and then for the movement, you, you got to have that tackified floor because if people slip with the heavy weight on their back or if they're, they're moving weights around, that could be a liability issue for us. So this floor is designed for a fitness facility. Right. And, and then again, the, because of the specific vendor, because one vendor, why? When you look at uh, some of the bigger vendors, and this could be any type of product, they usually have regional people that represent them uh, for the sales in that region. So for the region for New York State and New England for the two companies I listed, Gronk Fitness is the sole exclusive uh, representative for those products in New England. Okay, good. Uh, so, if there's no further discussion, all in favor? Opposed? Good. It is unanimous. B. Discussion of trading in two old horse trailers for a new trailer. Yes, I just wanted to bring to the board's attention um, 
I believe it's a decision I can make with my authority, but this is a, a rarity uh, that we're trading out uh, equipment in the mounted unit. Um, kind of, if you look at the cruisers, we usually trade out three cruisers a year. We buy three new ones, and we trade out the three ones uh, for value to our either upfitting of the cars or to the value of the car. And I'm looking at this the same thing. Currently, the department owns a uh, Kingston two-horse trailer we've been using primarily, and the four-horse trailer, which is a fifth-wheeler trailer, which we can no longer use because we don't have a pickup truck. So it's not a piece of equipment we're ever going to use in the foreseeable future. So what I'm looking to do is purchase a new trailer um, from a local vendor, most likely. Uh, we'll be looking at prices and the competitiveness of the prices. And we're going to be getting the trade-in value somewhere anywhere between seven and $10,000 for the two trailers we have. I anticipate the cost of the trailer we're going to look to purchase with everything we need will be somewhere in the vicinity of fourteen to 15000 The remaining cost off of the trade uh, will be borne. We've already spoken to the folks. The, uh, if you remember, we have an association called the Friends of the Mounted Patrol that provide funding. They have sufficient funds in their accounts to pick up the rest of that, so this, again, would have no impact or money out of the budget from the taxpayer. So I just wanted to bring it to your, uh, your attention. Doesn't require a vote, but I didn't know if there was any input on that. If you wanted to offer it. anybody, sounds like you're an old horse trader. <laughs> well, that would be Mr. Pelletier. Uh, I've, I've recruited Dennis to help me with this project. Uh, Lieutenant Gidley is overseeing the project with uh, retired Deputy Chief Pelletier, who consults with us with a mounted unit, and retired Sergeant John Galvin. So I take the vote, Mr. Chairman, because we're getting rid of an asset. Take a vote. Yeah. Just to cover it. All right. I'll make a motion. We allow the chief to dispose of the two trailers. I'll second. Moved by Rusty, seconded by Regina. All in favor? Unanimous. Uh, now we go to discussion of purchasing new cruiser from Fund 26. Fund 26, uh, as Christy just highlighted, is the private detail fund uh, that we utilize to pay police officers and firemen for those times that uh, we need private details to be borne by a private vendor. On top of that, the reimbursement we receive, there's a 30% administrative fee uh, to the uh, person requesting it, which goes into Fund 26. The Fund 26 can be utilized, again, to pay the police and fire, but also for the availability of vehicles. We have used that fund in the past to outfit cruisers uh, and also purchase vehicles when there wasn't other funding available when we had something happen to a vehicle that had to be, we had a couple of vehicles go down with uh, rusted frames. So we've used funds in, like that in the past. What I was hoping to do and have a discussion tonight is, right now there's, I think, believe $82,000 in the budget to buy three new uh, cruisers for <coughs> the department. Roughly $26,000 a piece with some upfitting. Uh, I believe the price is uh, going to remain the same this year. It may change just a little bit under the state bid. What I'd like to do is take one of those three cruisers and pay for it out of the Fund 26. That would free up some money to deal with some issues that we've been, uh, we've been trying to deal with to try to help with public safety issues in the town of Hampton. Two principal areas. Uh, we've been talking for a number of years. We've been utilizing the crowd control fencing uh, during our busier holidays to try to keep the crowds out of the road. This helps with the public safety and it also frees up officers to do other things as opposed to just keeping people out of the roadway. And we found that to be very effective over the last several Fourth of Julys. In order to get enough fencing to cover the areas that we wanted to cover, approximately $15,000 to do that. Um, prices change, but it's in the ballpark of $15,000 delivered. To cover the section, I'd like to cover the section from F Street North on the on the west side of Ocean Boulevard, all the way in the front of the casino and all the way up to that area known as Ash Corps by Mrs. Mitchell's. We would fence all of that off. Additionally, we would fence off the area uh, directly in front of the seashell and open up just the areas where the crosswalks are. That would greatly enhance the traffic flow. I think Mr. Uh, Nyan came in and spoke on that for the HBAC. The experienced Hampton group. Uh, they're also willing to step, on, step up and help us dress up those pieces of fence a little bit more with those decorative uh, socks that go over them with a good message, you know, welcome to Hampton or how we would do it. They would be willing to help us with the costs on trying to, at least sections of that, dress it up and make it look nice and aesthetic to the area. 
So I wanted to have that discussion tonight. Uh, the other area we could talk is I've been receiving phone calls already about people wanting speed tables. We had some success putting that speed, speed table out on Moore Avenue, yeah. but when people see that, <clears throat> now they want it in their neighborhood. So I'd like to purchase a few more of those speed tables with some of this money we could save by buying the cruiser out of that other fund to try to address some of these safety needs that we just couldn't get to in the budget or through Warren Articles last year. Thank you. Open to discussion. Um, yeah, I've also received several, you know, because they saw that speed bump on Moore Ave, and now they're like, oh, well, you know, some areas down North Beach, some areas down the south part of the main beach, and then even a couple places uh, in town, too. And I think the, I'm sorry, the fencing of the, that you put up down, we've had that for the past 4th of July. Past last, last, yeah, last several, supplies, but we right? don't have a lot of it. We remember we borrowed a, a, a good chunk of it the last two years from Lawrence Mass PD. Right, was good yeah. enough. But there's no guarantee we can get that. It's you know, out of their goodwill that we borrow it, but if we can't borrow it, then we're stuck with what, with what we have. So the 15000 or whatever you're estimating right now would be for the whole summer? or Yeah, we would purchase the So would that would be the there fencing. permanently? So I, I have been speaking with the, uh, the state. Um, we'd have to get permission. I could do it under my authority as chief of police, but I'm trying to work cooperatively with state DOT. And they seem very open to the idea because it would enhance the pedestrian safety in that area. Especially in the is, real dangerous areas. And that's one of the most critical areas. When you get to F Street North, yeah. that's where things bog down because people are coming across that open section of the beach, getting up on the road, and just walking out into the roadway in front of the traffic. Okay. This would really give us a chance to try to curb some of that behavior. All right. I have no further questions. Rusty? I, I think the fencing is a good idea. My only concern with the speed tables is once we start, where do you stop? What's your opinion on the uh, the radar signs? We have them. We do have. We purchased some last year with some of the money left in the budget. We're literally working with Public Works now to set up the areas where we're going to put the uh, the posts and uh, programming those to do to be most effective. We we have them. Okay. We have Good. I think three, two or three of those. I think I know there are towns around us that use them, and I think they're pretty effective. I believe they. Northampton. When you drive over on one A. Right when you hit the town line, they usually have the, you'll see the pole there, and sometimes the sign will be there. With the, with the system we have, we've got the identical one to Northampton. You set the pole, you set poles around different key points in town, and all you do is you take the head mount off, you unlock it, and move it to the next pole. Now, does that, does that take data yes, from, the, the, from yep. those so that you can get when people are speeding or when they're... <laughs> Not driving. It'll print out a report to us to let us know the peak hours, the highs, the lows, and the averages. Okay. I think, that, I think that makes a lot more sense than start putting speed tables around. I think I just, once once we start, we've already done one, and now look, we haven't. Well, what I like about the speed tables we purchased, and I, I agree, we can't do one on every street, but what we can do is we can move them around. Well, and that's the other thing I was going to say is, is uh, I, I don't want to see them permanently mounted on... And, and I don't want people to have that false impression that once we put one there, there's always going to be one there. So uh -huh. it, what we would have to do is if the mobility is what we would seek, as you remember the last time we were here for that, it was done at the direction of the board. Right. So what I would need is authority from the board as chief of police to choose those locations where we would set those. So uh -huh. I would need that authority along with the purchase. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Rick. I agree with what Rusty just said. <coughs> I'm against the speed bumps, uh, but I'm for the signs. The radar signs? Yes. Okay. Phil? Yeah, uh, the motion for the cruiser. Could you frame that so I can make that, please? Fred, do we need a motion on this? I the cruiser, actually, no. It's already in the it's already in the ordinance. Okay, fine. Uh, the motion for uh, or the authority. Do we need a motion for that? Yeah, for, to purchase. A for, well, we we have a discussion going on about the speed bumps. <coughs> some questions as to whether that's the right way to go. That's what my intent was to do it, and I'm open to discussion on it. I I don't have a problem making a motion uh, or Phil to make the motion to allow him to purchase the speed bumps, but I don't want to see them permanently mounted so that we give him the authority to move them. I second Rush's motion. Yeah, I thought the whole thing with the speed bump, it was more of like a test thing. You put it somewhere to see 
what is actually going on. And again, going back to yeah. last year, the one we bought, when we approved it, it was for more Ave specifically. I believe that was the vote taken by the board. Right. So what I need now is if I purchase two or three more sets of these, that I, I am granted authority by the board to use those to the best interest of the uh, public safety and put those in spots that we can identify that need them. I agree to that. I, I agree with that. I agree with Rusty, though, also, that because I had a million people last year, not a million, but people last year, hey, I want one of those speed bumps on my street. Hey, if my street needs one of those speed bumps, and, mm -hmm. and, and all I, of a sudden we'd have speed bumps all over. And I, and I think you should also have the authority to move the one on yeah. Morav if you need to. I think yep. that should fall under all the same same issue, that you should have the authority to. Okay. And, and the, the fence is... I mean, I can remember going down the beach last year when that fence was there and you had, boy, what a difference that made. Oh, that yeah. was phenomenal. What well, saves in the offices, because I remember yeah. the 4th of July, I've highlighted from just that one block of C to D Street. It used to take 10 officers to keep the crowd out of the road. Now I can do it with two or three if I have enough sensing. And I know you're going to comment about what you saw me doing last year, being one of the ones at the fence, but because <laughs> I didn't have enough fence last year, that was the problem. That's why I was over there. <laughs> He was doing a good job of keeping the crowd back. Attempting. Did you want to make a motion, Phil? Uh, Rusty's got it. I second it. Okay. Uh, any other discussion? Any more? All in favor? Opposed? If it's unanimous. Nice. Um, nothing else? I think that's the last thing you have me for tonight. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Nice Thank evening, you. gentlemen. Thank you. Maybe you can go help pick up that lumber on... <laughs> Out of 101. I worked out with Tony this morning. I'm okay. <laughs> uh, next, we have uh, Chris Jacobs, DPW Director, and Jen Hale, DPW Deputy Director. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just pointed out to that his motion was to him to move the speed bumps. <laughs> <laughs> no, to direct. Uh, oh, uh, I never heard the word up for direct, but anyhow, I did hear me. If he could move the speed bumps. Good evening, and A, erosion of town land at Sun Valley, letter to NH, NNHDES. Too many initials. Too many N? <coughs> no, no, that's fine, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we're pulling that letter. I had a <coughs> meeting with the uh, director of the Port Authority uh, from Portsmouth, uh, as well as the harbor master for uh, Hampton Seabrook Harbor. And uh, there's some information in this letter that's wrong. Uh, first of all, the, uh, uh, the State Department of Environmental Services uh, does not, is not a party to this. They have to issue a permit simply because the Army Corps of Engineers issued a permit. The Army Corps and the Harbor, Harbor Command are the ones that are in charge of this, and they are moving to uh, fix the problems that are down there. So this letter is inaccurate, so we pulled it. Okay. Then B, purchasing policy procedures, waivers, uh, small i, energy audit proposal for services waiver of 718-3, competitive bids have not been sought. That was a uh, actual Warren article. Um, Jennifer's been working with uh, Sharon Vardy for State, so I'm not sure you on uh, Basically, I did prepare a memo for... Uh, the town manager that will explain it. Uh, the town of Hampton was selected by NHDES to receive 100% principal forgiveness through the Clean Water State Revolving Fund loan program to conduct an energy audit of the wastewater treatment facility and pump stations. Uh, Warren Article 13 was approved at town meeting, which allowed the board of selectmen to enter into the loan. Uh, the DPW has received a proposal from Process Energy Services, LLC, the selected consultant of NHDES to provide energy audits and technical assistance under the Leading New Hampshire's Wastewater Treatment Facilities to Energy Efficiency, which was a DOE grant project. Um, we're recommending that the Board of Selectmen authorize Town Manager to award and enter into the contract with Process Energy Services LLC in the amount of $16,060, which was the exact dollar value that was in the Warren article. Uh, based on their qualifications and commitment with NHDES. Um, the consultant has been chosen by NHDES through the RFQ program. In talking with Sharon, uh, DES put it out uh, for quals. They got two respondents. Uh, the two respondents actually teamed together to tackle all the audits they're going to do across the state. 
Uh, so they're doing this for all the towns that have been selected through the grant process and also this Clean Water State Revolving Fund. Um, we're saying that this recommendation to award does not comply with the Town of Hampton purchasing policy, referencing section 718-3, as we didn't put competitive sealed bids or written professional proposals um, out. Um, but as I mentioned before, the consultant was chosen by DES through their quals passage. Uh, so as a result, a non-compliance waiver is being requested. Okay. I'll make the motion. I'll to, second it. To uh, allow the town manager to enter an agreement with okay. us. Okay. Does anybody have any discussion on this? No. All in favor? Unanimous. Thank you very much. Next. Compost uh, bid. 2017-01 comp compost removal and hauling waiver of 718-4.B.2 less than three bids. Uh, every three years we put together a bid for uh, disposing of our uh, compost, the, the leaf waste, the garden waste that we get, uh, lawn, clipping, lawn clippings. We sent it out to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven separate organizations to uh, see if we could solicit bids. We received back just two bids. Uh, one was from Dirt Doctors. Uh, they'd actually pay us $1.32 a cubic yard for the compost. The other bid was for zero, uh, and that's typically what we've received in the past. So this will be the first time in f the last five or six years that we've actually received uh, money on a per unit basis. Um, in the past, I think, you know, uh, I believe Seacoast Farms and others have given us like a thousand dollars for lump sum. But uh, we put the bid together the same way we did three years ago, and dollar thirty-two. So we're recommending the dirt doctors. Um, uh, that, as I said, the dollar thirty-two, and because we did not receive three qualified bidders, would be asking for a waiver of the bid process. So moves. Second. Second. Okay. Any discussion? <laughs> I, as you know, you can't. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. You've obviously gone up to seven people, and you only got back two. So, right. you get paid. All in favor? Unanimous. Uh, 2017-005 Lafayette Road survey waiver mm -hmm. of 718-4B2 less than three bids. Um. Lafayette Road project, uh, we're all aware that uh, uh, right now or later this month, hopefully, Aquarian uh, will get moving on their water uh, line replacement, and in the fall, we're going to be doing the sewer line uh, replacement. Um, plans and specs are being drawn up as we speak. As part of that process, uh, Jen and I drafted a uh, request for survey uh, basically, we're, it's, it's kind of a new thing. Um, we're looking for survey in a 3D mode. Um, we're looking from building facade to building facade. This ties in with the, uh, with the last Warren article that was approved this year, the $300,000 um, Lafayette Road reconstruction uh, monies. Um, because we're looking to get it streetscaped or designed, and what would it look like in 3D? Uh, what would it look like to the taxpayers should they vote for it? Um, by requesting this level of survey, um, we'll be able to produce that plan. And this, uh, the other thing that we've uh, tried to accomplish with this bid is, um, as you know, there's been discussion about getting Unitil or uh, paying Unitil to bury or remove the overhead electric and, and the other utilities that are along this corridor. Um, this survey would um, allow us to, uh, not only would we use the survey results for the sewer, they would use the survey results for their electrical design, uh, the landscape architect that we eventually hope to utilize for this project would be using the same information, but we'll end up with a 3D uh, capability. They literally, um, I'm not sure it's all done by hovercraft, but, uh, or, um, but I know a lot of it's done by 3D laser scanning. They pick up everything. Uh, I'll have Jen explain the actual bid recommendation. Uh, so again, this was put out to bid. Uh, it did go to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, <coughs> ten different surveyors. 
Um, we were very specific in the bid, wanting the laser scan. Not everybody has that capability. Uh, we received two bids back. Uh, our recommendation is to award the Lafayette Road Survey to Doucette Survey. Uh, they were the lowest responsible bidder uh, to submit a bid and meet the qualifications. They have the experience and the reputation to perform the necessary work. Uh, we recommend that the Board of Selectmen accept the bid submitted by Doucette in the amount of $28,840 and authorize the town manager to execute a contract to complete the work. Uh, this recommendation to award does not comply with the Town of Hampton purchasing policy, referencing section 718-4 subsection B2, because there were fewer than three qualified bidders. As I mentioned, the invitation to bid was distributed to 10 vendors with only two bids submitted. So moved. $28,845 to do set. Second. All in favor? Unanimous. Uh, last one, Lafayette Road Professional Engineering Services waiver of 718-4. So this is really the, the counterpart to that, and Chris just mentioned. We are chomping at the bit uh, to get the sewer line replaced uh, for the Warren article that was approved along Lafayette Road. To do so, we do need that complete bid package uh, and design drawings uh, for the contractor. We are requesting that uh, Wright Pierce Engineers be awarded uh, the contract to do the civil engineering that is necessary. Um, they have been awarded multiple sewer projects in the past. They are familiar with our piping networks, our systems, our plant. Um, we also have an existing executed uh, agreement with them already for general engineering services. So this would be a um, uh, an add to that uh, overall contract. Uh, to expedite, expedite the design and construction document excuse me, to expedite the design and construction documentation needed to get this project out to bid, the department has requested a proposal from Wright Pierce to complete the work. We're recommending that the Board of Selectmen approve and authorize the town manager to execute the proposal provided by Wright Pierce in the amount of $37,000 for the following reasons. Wright Pierce has worked with the town to complete the installation of multiple projects, including the sludge dewatering press, the design and permitting for the Church Street pump station, the design and permitting for the Church Street force main location, and the ongoing facility study that they're doing for us, to name a few. When we started the Church Street pump station, the town solicited qualifications and experience statements from more than three firms, and Wright Pierce was selected as a result of that process, which occurred within the last three years. Wright Pierce has extensive experience with NHDES with respect to permitting and providing funding options. Uh, Wright Pierce engineers can also start the project immediately uh, due to their experience with us and their involvement uh, with the project to date. So this recommendation to accept the proposal and award complies with the Town of Hampton purchasing policy referencing 718-4 subsection B2. Because the engineer was previously selected under an open process for engineering services within the last three years. There's GES uh, uh, contract right now. I motion that uh, the amount of uh, 37000 be awarded to Wright Pierce for uh, the agenda item, Lafayette Road Professional Engineering Services. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Unanimous. <coughs> Thank you. Are you here for the... I can be. He, yeah, it's obviously he's Daniel Mellon can can jam core excavators. I don't see. He is not in the room. Durian Water Project, Lafayette Road, night work request. We have a meeting on Thursday with um, Jamco uh, contract excavators. Uh, they've been selected by Aquarian uh, to do the water replacement work on the same section of Lafayette Road. Project. We've been okay. discussing. Um, and on Thursday, we have uh, safety meetings at the uh, with the police department, one o'clock in the afternoon, and let's see, a Wright Pierce meeting at ten o'clock in the morning for the same project. Um, as you know, this is the same process that we used with Jamco in the past when we were doing the drainage improvement project um, at the High Lafayette Road intersection. Um, they were requesting essentially the same practice again to do this work at night. Uh, I know Jen has expressed to, and we've talked with them, that we would be highly involved in meeting with the residents, although uh, 
their, it would be their primary task. And, and I think that that's very important to know. I mean, we're here because we have worked with them. You'll see a letter uh, attached to them with the department's recommendation that, yeah, we do agree that it is night work, um, but that they put forth an extensive effort with Aquarian. As a reminder, it's Aquarian's project, um, the first half. Um, but how we set the scene and how we set the tone and how we all work together will certainly be a benefit for the second half when we come together with the sewer project. Um, so, you know, this is, again, direct communication with the residents, the business owners, and the abutters in this area. Do you, do, do you need a vote on that? It has to be, Fred, correct me if I'm wrong, it has to be approved by the Board of Selectmen to work night hours? Yeah, it does. Right. Specifically approved by vote. Right. I just want to make sure that I totally agree with you. You did an excellent job when we did the the this, the, uh, the drainage up there, right. but it was you that got out there and did that. And we need to stress to them that they need to get out there and do the same thing. I think in every did. meeting, I may have said that more than well, once because that is what it takes. They, they they can't avoid their responsibility, but at the same time, we we grasp the fact that this is the first phase of probably two or three phases of construction. And if we don't force them to set the correct tone right off the bat, absolutely, we will. We this we'll department. Pay the will do I mean, if, if if they don't want to do that, then they don't work at night. I mean, that's true. That's so, simple. But I think fast, it makes it think, easier on the police department, and it makes it easier on the businesses, um, and we can work with the residents. It, it worked really well with the with the drainage problem you had you, you had up there, and I think uh, they need to make sure that they know how well it worked. Do we have a yeah. motion? I'll make the motion that we allow uh, Aquarian to work. Is it 22 to what, 10 o'clock at night? Uh, 10 o'clock at night to 6 o'clock in the morning? Is it? That is what we did last time. Um, With the it, it, I think it might have been 10 to 5. What did uh, Jam Kara? I don't have the letter in front of me. I'm sorry. Uh, did they just say night work? At 6, it starts getting very busy. Um, believe it or not, uh, yeah, downtown. Yeah, right. 10 to 6, 22 10 to, to 6, 0600. Yeah. To 0600, with the caveat that they make sure that they work with the neighbors and the uh, people up there to keep them informed. Under public works supervision. Under yeah. public works supervision. Okay, motion by Rusty. I'll second that. Seconded by Regina. All in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Town manager's report. Mr. Chairman, before we do that, would you like to go back and accept the minutes of April 10th? Did I skip that? Yeah. That's pretty we did, yeah. Uh, motion. Approval of minutes April 10th, 2017. That? Second. All in favor? Just Thank you. So we make it nice and legal and we Thank don't miss you. something. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, I'd like to advise people to please observe the posted areas erected by the State Fish and Game. Uh, for the nesting by the returning piping plovers. They've been erected under the supervision of the Federal Fishing Game Department. Uh, please remain outside those posted areas. We, we do not want to have any difficulties with the uh, fishing game or the federal authorities. Spring leaf pickup pick up will begin, uh, actually it began today. Uh, leaves should be placed in a biodegradable paper bag or loosely filled in a plastic barrel and left at the curb the same day as your refuse collection. It will not be collected by the same truck, but it will be collected the same day as your refuse is. Residents should take time uh, to work, uh, to watch for the work that's ongoing by the State Department of Transportation on Route 1 from New Hampshire 101 to Seabrook. Traffic issues may be encountered during this ongoing work. I know they have several... Uh, Alternating crossovers already erected on Route 1. Finding alternative routes would probably be advisable during the high traffic periods. It's obvious traffic is going to be backed up because they've uh, the areas on Route 1 that have two lanes in some cases have been reduced to one or less than one. I want to thank the residents for their hard work and um, to clean the uh, trash left on the beach following a very warm day this past week. Uh, your efforts are greatly appreciated by your fellow citizens. It was a tremendous job, and it was something that was carried out by our citizens and not the uh, dread. 
Also, I want to uh, just advise people that uh, there will be a food drive conducted by the United States Postal Service. Uh, they request that you put out non-perishable donations in a bag by your mailbox on Saturday, May 13th. This food goes to the various food pantries in the region and uh, help decrease your tax burdens. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Any questions? Nothing, Mr. Chairman. Trustee. I'd just like to remind people, as the, as the town manager has said, they're working on Route 1, uh -huh. that one of the cut-throughs, uh, there's only a couple. You can either do Ocean Boulevard or Toll Farm Road right. and remind people that the speed limit is 30 miles an hour on Toll Farm Road. Or okay. less. Rick? All less. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Welch. No, sir. Thank you, sir. All right. Sir. Old business, joint operation plan, red, 2017. Mr. Chairman, um, you had directed that we draft a letter to Dredd. Uh, so summarizing your comments at the past meeting, we have done that. We've distributed to the board. Uh, I don't have any questions about what you did, but I'm wondering if the, le the letter meets with your approval. That's, that's my primary question. Regina? I think the letter looks really good to me. And I have a question on number four, but it's actually more about the town, so I'll, I'll talk about it later. Okay. Nothing to do with the Dredd Agreement. All right. Rusty? Offset. Phil? Yeah, you know, I walked down there. You saw me walking this weekend, Jim, and it's, it's funny. A lot of organizations, um, you know, before they put the meters up and start collecting revenue, uh, you go from the juxtaposition of the Atlantic Ocean, which uh, the state doesn't own or control and make beautiful, and you go to the mercantile side of uh, taxpayers and folks that conduct commerce, and you go into their shops, and they're meticulous, and they're well-staffed, and they do a great job. So you go from nature and you go to what the town of Hampton does, and you go to what the small business folks do in, in Hampton, people like this young man, and people like Mr. Bridal, and people that uh, have worked for municipalities. And then you look at the state. The benches are upside down. There's sand everywhere. The sidewalks aren't done, but they're out there with their hands off of the meters. So, uh, you know, this, this, uh, this um, dread uh, MOU or whatever, and I, I made myself clear last week, and um, I'm very enthusiastic about the letter. Uh, they don't have the appropriate uh, inland marine equipment down there in the winter to do the job. They've got a small bobcat. Anyone that's been around a construction or a shovel knows the deal. They don't have the staff. They peel off too much money to support other state parks. They don't do the job. They're not doing the job now. The fences that uh, uh, the state will tell you how much they spent and how great it's done, um, there are dozens and dozens and dozens of feet of sheared fence top of black fence that's on the boardwalk that's dangerous to uh, anyone that's going to hurdle it that are young. Uh, it's unsightly, and it's a mess. Uh, I've worked for large government organizations and platforms, and people that uh, performed at that level, or if they performed at that level in this town, uh, would be looking for work somewhere else. Uh, we asked to get phone calls from directors down there. We, we take the time to go down there and speak with people. They don't give you a call. Mr. Bryce doesn't call. I've specifically asked down there um, and spoke with the uh, person with the corner office overlooking the ocean. So uh, good work. Stay on it. I don't have any confidence that uh, the state's going to do anything appropriately. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, reaffirm vote on purchasing policy and procedures. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, we, we had uh, done an <coughs> audit recently on uh, departments uh, following your purchasing policy because we figure that's that's pretty important for us to check now and then and we found a number of uh, what I would say are uh, errors in what's been going on with purchases and purchases by various departments uh, I asked Christina to uh, to please issue to you a, uh, a sort of synopsis uh, and I came in, in red print for everybody to see uh, not that Mark had, had, had made this because he, as you know, he loves to use red print. Um, we had done this just simply to advise the board that we're taking some positive action to make sure that your regulations are followed. Uh, and in doing that, we had included some of this material within the purchasing policy. So there would be no reservations from people to say, well, gee, we didn't see it in the policy, but we saw it in the memorandum. I think it's important, and we ran into a few situations here where bills were, um, in fact, charged to the town. No purchase requisitions were made out. No purchase orders were signed. Uh, they were two months late in being paid. Uh, things that bothered us terribly when we started looking through the process, and we found these errors. So in trying to reinforce, we have sent out this cover memo to the various departments, and uh, we have now included 
some general language from that cover memo into the purchasing policy so that there will be hopefully less of a problem with this as we move along. But we're going to critique it again in a few months to see where, how we are doing. And we may come back with you to you from, for some additional support within the ordinance. We want to make sure that what you want is done. And we, don't, we want to make sure that the needs of the town are met and that we spend the money right. So we're being very particular about how we go through this. I hope everybody had a chance to review this. It wasn't something that we we uh, we bludgeoned our department heads with, but we, we we wanted them to understand that it was important to follow the rules because that's what saves us money and gets the taxpayers' work done diligently and importantly. I've reviewed that work, uh, and I know that rightfully so, that has been a contentious issue when there have been uh, uh, discrepancies in the past, so we reaffirm that, and every single time, and Mr. Chairman, you were talking about it tonight, and you're very good about it, and uh, does that need a motion to reaffirm that? Is it that does, you, sir, and I have I have a, a policy here for you, which has been updated to sign. Wonderful. Uh, if you would frame that motion, and uh, um, I will incorporate it, please. Uh, but the board move to, uh, to reaffirm and vote on the purchasing policies and procedures as most recently amended and, and put to the board tonight. So moved. Second. Second. Rusty, all in yep. favor? Opposed? And uh, I'm afraid I messed up on something. We're going to have to go back to the approval of the minutes on April 10th because I was absent and I just voted to approve those minutes. <laughs> oh, well, we need to. So, four and one abstention. Then. <laughs> yeah, four and one abstention. Okay. We can cover that in community announcements. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, new business, amend Chapter 594, Code of Ethics, 594-6, subsection A. Mr. Chairman, we had, the board had talked about uh, the effect of uh, the Code of Ethics, some issues that came up in the last few weeks. Uh, we've drafted something for the board's thought. Um, so that there would, we would hope if the board adopted it, that there would be no reservation as to what the ordinance means. Even though it is a voluntary ordinance, uh, it should be self-explanatory, and we had hoped that this amendment would be self-explanatory. So we offer it to you for your consideration. Mr. Chairman, I think we've all read that, and uh, I would move that we accept that uh, draft prepared by the town manager. Uh, I'll second that motion. Second. And all in favor? Opposed? All right. Uh, number two, Place Cove Walkway. Now, I, I'd like to just speak on this because I had a, a couple of calls from people on, on Place Cove yeah. Walkway, and I think other people have had calls and discussions with people on this. I went down there and looked at it, and it, it's extremely dangerous, and there's no way. I mean, Place Cove has one entrance, actually. For, That's for, correct. To get onto the beach, and there's all rocks and stuff. I mean, if you go to North Beach, they can go down and walk down the ramp. Right. You might have to walk a little. If you go to the main beach, there's a ramp that they can get down there some way. At Place Cove, because you go down the stairs, then there are two stairs missing. So there's a railing, and you go down, and then all of a sudden, you got to go over the rocks and stuff. And there's a lot of people who, let's say, might be uh, mature and uh, might have a little bit of mobility problems and stuff like that. And something needs, to, we, we've talked about this every year, and we go over it and over it, and the people down there come to us, they complain, they talk, well, they legitimately complain, and they talk about it. So there's something needs to be done on that. So where do we sit on that? I agree, Mr. Chairman. And for the last three years, we have uh, asked if we could get a permit to uh, repair and get a permanent repair permit uh, for the end of the stairs as they come down onto the beach. And what we were told was that, no, you cannot. What you can do is you can down with a shovel and move some of the rocks, and that's the end of it. Uh, that really can't be the end of it, at least not in my opinion. Uh, this beach is subject to ADA compliance. We have to allow our senior citizens access to it. <coughs> And those with walking, slight walking impairments, doesn't have to be a very large walking impairment, cannot get down on the beach. 
Uh, with the board's help, we hope if you would pass a motion instructing us to again file for appropriate action with the Department of Environmental Services, um, that we would file again that request to do repair work down there and put those stairs and the end of the stairs at the end in proper order uh, and ask for a, a permit where we can do regular maintenance on a regular basis. My hope is that uh, that will be approved uh, and if it is not, I will be back to ask you for uh, authority to go to the governor's office and have something done with this under ADA. And how long will this take? If we can get permission from DES and we'll, we'll make this as an, as an emergency request, we should have this done within two weeks. Okay. All right. So Assuming okay. they will grant it. All right. I, I would ask that maybe somebody make the motion. I'd make that motion that we okay. ask DES. As that's what Fred's recommending, right? Yes, we correct. DES, right. and if they just... If they, they say no, we will not allow you to do that, then I think we have to go straight to government. Because I was down there a couple of times last summer, and if you're carrying beach stuff, I, I would have, I was having How difficulty. Fix it? How about uh, we fix it? Uh, someone's going to be carrying a baby. Forget the old people. Uh, they're carrying a baby. And, said mature people. Yeah, well, some, some, I've, I've had a baby at a very young age. I don't think I was that mature. So, um, <laughs> Uh, if you direct me to fix yeah. it, I'll fix it. Fix it and, and tell DES you are fixing it and tell them if they've got a problem that uh, you'll have the entire delegation and the selectmen go to the governor's council, go to the governor, and uh, we'll go to the speaker and the minority leader. That and works a lot better. We'll get it done before someone gets killed and we play these that. paper games. All right, so the motion been Second. seconded. Any discussion? Sounds good All to in me. favor? Let's go get them. Fix it. All right. So we're going to direct that to be fixed. Yes, sir. we we'll do it immediately. Very good. Down the torpedoes like full speed ahead, I think, is what Admiral Dewey said. Yeah. <laughs> Approval engagement letter for Bond Council Divine Milliman. Uh, this was devised uh, at the request of Town Council with the assistance of the Finance Department, uh, and we, we would request that the, the Board approve it so that we can start the process of hiring Bond Council in time for the uh, bonding uh, of the improvements on uh, Lafayette Road. So moved. Second. Second. Rusty, Virginia, all in favor? Opposed? Uh, closing comments. I just have one question, actually. We were talking about, on that dread agreement, the letter you wrote up about allowing horses on the beach. Well, our horses currently are allowed on the beach. Yes, and a are. couple people down on White's Island have told me that you know, people let the horses defecate. So now we have this uh, waste ordinance now. So that is enforceable by the town, correct? Down on, on White Side? On our property, right. On our property, That's like down correct. the end of Boston Ave? That's correct. Be enforceable? Yep. So if they see that, they can call the police department? They can call the police department. If the police department has an officer available, they will send them down there and issue them a citation if they have not picked up the material. Okay. Thank you. Motion adjourned oh, no, at 2030. One, one, sorry, Thank one you. quick one. Stand by. Is, uh, I'd just like to remind everybody that the town is out painting oh, the yes. crosswalks and the arrows and stuff at night so that if you're out and see cones and stuff, that's what's being worked on. You hear them talking. Yeah. Um, yeah. Before, before we adjourn, Mr. Bean, just remind people that we are now going on the summer schedule yes, sir. every other week. Uh, it, Dramatically opposed by Mr. Bean, but we can do it anyway. Vehemently, thank you, sir. Okay. <laughs> Motion to adjourn at 2030. Second. All in favor? <laughs> All right. Thank you, Channel 22. Thank you. Uh